And that oh, must be wrong. Maybe that's what's wrong with my left ear. I'm deaf in it. I don't have the volume turned up. <laughs> all right. Oh, you guys are all chatting away, and I've heard nothing. Yeah. yeah. Better now. So, Good. Yeah. Hi, Elsa. Hi. Elsa. Hi. 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 I'm, we're on recording already, so I just thought I Oh, wow. You don't waste any time, do you, John. So, no. you, you, yes. Come on. Look good. So I just heard on the news, Elsa, that the, they started naming hurricanes for this season. And uh, when we get to E, you're it. It's gonna oh, hurt. really? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> I'm thinking it's going to be a pretty wild one. <laughs> so, hey, so this week, oh, where'd you go? Well, there you are. <laughs> This week we're in the final home stretch or whatever of getting this book done. Can and I ask? A, can I ask a question? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Is this is this the final meeting, or is there one? Or is there one more kind one of a wrap-up? There, there is a wrap-up session next oh, week. So, okay. Uh, so Pastor Benson will do that. And do you have any questions that we missed? Or, okay. Subjects we didn't cover, you, sure. you know, can follow up with him or whatever. And uh, and then, yeah, we'll also, next week, we'll talk about um, how we want to meet next, or throughout the summer or whatever, whether we want to meet every other week or once a month or, or I don't know, if you guys got ideas, we can throw those out next week. So, I I had no idea what comes after the 40 day challenge. Yeah, me. Yeah, either. we don't know. <laughs> <laughs> the 60 day challenge. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> There's plenty so, of follow up for me to do. Yeah. I can say that right now. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It was, this was a this was a hard week, and uh, I mean, all of us. You go through the whole the whole book. You go back, and we kind of missed uh, a few days here and there, and we weren't able to do a few things, and Oh, I'll do that later. And yeah, it's it's kind of a nice uh, resource to go back. Yeah, we should be doing this, but it was very tough trying to get it all done in a week or a day or that yeah. particular day. So yeah, so we can talk more about that next week too. So, um, but we are doing the week of going. It starts on page two o three, whatever two o three. And uh, it starts with day 34. And if you go skip to the challenge on page 209, the challenge of that day was uh, at some point today, gather your family or roommates or friends and share what God has done for you. This might be over dinner, pray with your family and have everyone in the family pray at least one sentence. Uh, if you don't know what to pray, you can start by thanking him for all the things he has given to you and done for you. And you notice I didn't open up with a, a prayer. <laughs> so guess what we're going to be doing? <laughs> right. we're gonna... so can I mark this off as me having completed this challenge? <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. So I would. We okay. all. We all. <laughs> and later, if you have a a testimony and uh, you can say that tonight too and you can check that one off as recording it because we are recording this so it, so what i would like to do is like uh, i'll start and go around the horn here if, if, if you're all comfortable saying at least something uh and like again you can either say <laughs> or you can say lord i'm thankful for what okay. uh, who, how do i how do i know when it's my turn to pray out loud oh i can uh, i'll 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 how about if i go like me linda jim uh phyllis terry elsa and then do you want to close up i'll wrap it up <laughs> okay <laughs> terry you feel okay with doing that yeah okay and uh, and I'll just say your name after after each person is done. Okay. Hopefully, that in case helps. we forget, 
forget the <laughs> forget the order here or whatever. But that's the way you're on my my video here screen or whatever. So so we'll just start and. Um, Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for once again giving us the opportunity to meet with on Zoom and discuss the Red Letter Challenge. Uh, we all have a story to tell. We all have a prayer in our heart that we want to share. And I just want to pray that, um, that you would continue to forgive me for my sins. I would like to uh, thank you for protecting my allergy-prone grandson when he ate a peanut last week and um, i just want you to bless this group and be with them today linda okay um dear lord i'm just so thankful for this great study group that we have and the friendships that we've started and i'm just i just feel grateful <laughs> for my family and friends jim well, I'd like to thank, thank the Lord for um, helping my youngest daughter. She had a minor stroke here last week. Aww. And I want to thank everybody for uh, praying for her. She's recovering now. She's back to work. And um, hopefully, with God's help, she'll, she'll get back to normal. Thank you. Phyllis. Lord, thank you for all the blessings that you give to us each and every day. <clears throat> I'm very thankful for um, Jim's surgery that went so well, for the surgery of um, my lifelong friend Mary, and her surgery went well, and the recovery of Carrie, and um, just very thankful for all the people that uh, you have blessed me with that surround me and are, I can call friends and loved ones. So thank you, Lord, for all these blessings every day. Amen. Terry. Thank you, Lord, for the 40-day challenge. It was interesting and a good learning. Elsa. Lord, I know that I have a hard time sometimes being as thankful or as grateful for the gifts you give me, but I thank you for... Um, providing me a church home here in Minnesota and uh, especially the friendships that I have with my coworkers and outside of my job as well, as well as um, my mom and the close relationship we have. Dale. Oh Lord, when I consider your benefits and your kindness to me and to all my friends and relatives, I just get overwhelmed. Um, you are a good, good God, and you've been very good to us. Thank you for this church. Thank you for the fellowship that we uh, have with you. Thank you that you call <laughs> us to be your followers, even though we really can mess it up um, hmm. in, a, in a lot of ways, but still you you want us to co-labor with you and um, to, to share in that honor. So thank you for that. Uh, thank you for this group of people in the 40 day challenge. I hear their, uh, I hear how they've met the challenges. I hear where they struggle and all of it, uh, gives, gives me a lot of encouragement. Um, uh, we're all in this together and I'm very grateful for that. So Lord, uh, bless our time together here. Um, I'm, I'm looking forward to experiencing you through, uh, the fellowship with my brothers and sisters here. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> Check that off our list. Check that off your list. Yeah. <laughs> One done. <laughs> Only 39 more to go. <laughs> <laughs> about it. About it. <laughs> Yeah, all right, all right. So, uh, yeah, so day 34, uh, this author was talking about how it was difficult to pray with his wife. And I said, that's me too. Just, actually, it's kind of difficult for me to pray anywhere, anytime. 
I don't know if you feel the same way. But the, some people are more comfortable than others, you know, I, and I guess uh, you gain that confidence and to be able to do this the more you do it. But um, the, I think the author was saying that, you, you know, you don't do this alone. It, it, you, you have the Holy Spirit with you and he'll tell you what to say. That's the only way I can even do these meetings or whatever. I've, I got to rely on him because I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> so I start, I start a lot of the prayers when I'm unsure of the conversation that I'm going to have. I start out and say, oh, Lord, please bless me with the words that I'm supposed to tell this person at this time. Help <clears> me <throat> help me find the right way to do that. And I also know that. Um, and that's that's helped a lot because I know that the words that are coming out aren't just my words. They're exactly. they were given, given mm -hmm. to me. And then um, I also, um, when I was working, uh, we had a gal that got very, very sick. And and one of the girls I was working with says, boy, she says, could you say a prayer for her? And I said, yeah, well, give me your hand and, and we'll do that. And right there at work. And she goes, now we're going to pray now. And I go, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. We're yeah. going to do it now. And so we sat down and the two of us prayed, you know, together. And, and she goes, that was just so awesome. And she says, why did you do that? And I said, because you thought we should pray. So, we <laughs> yeah, pray. but we're so conditioned when you're at work, you know, oh, you can't do that. You know, yeah. that, that's not oh. good. Yes. You know, I had a Bible sitting on my desk one time and the boss says, are you going to start preaching to us? And I said, no, I'll go in the bathroom and do it. You know, <laughs> <laughs> really? No, no, no. You know, I just wanted to do it. That's all, you know. So, yeah. It so I think, I think we're conditioned. Yeah. Not, we're not to pray. But um, Jim and I pray together all the time. We yeah. find it very cool. Yeah. Comfortable doing that. Especially yeah. when we go on road trips. We'll always pray yeah. uh, that we have a safe trip out and back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah. You know, it's funny. I, I sit and pray and... Uh, you know, if I was going to pray out loud, I, I guess I could pray just like I do in in my head when I'm praying to God. But the problem there is I kind of wander off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that would probably yeah, not go so well here here on this yeah. Zoom meeting. Yeah. Did you guys do that at all? Or just, you're in the middle I'll of pray in my head and it's it's a nightmare. Because <laughs> <laughs> it I I'm off and then I'm like, you know, five minutes later, I'm like, Oh crap, I was praying. I'm sorry, Lord. Yeah, and then, I, we were having a conversation here. I guess I wasn't a listening face. Yeah, and then before I know it, I've fallen asleep. So <laughs> yeah. 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 I do that too. Yeah. I, I my brain, my I just wander, my brain wanders. Yeah. It's a scramble. It, you know, it's like you, you start with good intentions here and, and by the time you're done, it's like, or you fall asleep and it's like, yeah. where where was I? What uh -huh. was I? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. do you want me to start over lord yeah. <laughs> or i'll start over like two or three or four times <laughs> yeah. that's it that's it. it it's great he's a forgiving god because <laughs> yeah yeah if he was a father if that was my father he'd say john <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> So, yeah, so let's see what else we got on this. I'm just going through the book this week because I didn't like write a lot of notes or anything. Okay. Um, but on, I'm on page 206. It says, before we go out and proclaim to the world who God is, let's first remember that we are living out our faith in our home. And I think that's an important part that, you know, we can go pray to everybody else. We got to take care of here first you got to know it and uh, i think when we watched that video I, did you get the video from uh or, or like an email from tim uh, i got the link but i hadn't watched it yeah i think they talked about that where uh um I, and i didn't watch the whole thing too i got uh, interrupted by a fedex guy or whatever but um but uh now i forgot where i was the point I was going to make, it was in that video. I really need to write down notes. That's what I need to do. <laughs> no, about family. 
about yeah doing it yeah, to looking out your faith at home yeah there <laughs> we, <laughs> thanks just keep talking <laughs> we'll just fill in <laughs> uh, i'll probably remember in the tomorrow. next chat <laughs> yeah for tomorrow. tomorrow yeah that happens so before we go out and proclaim the world what god is let's remember that we are living out our faith at home now I totally forgot what the video said and I was going to bring that up, but, but yeah, so we need to, um, yeah. And then the next line is, are there ways you can engage in a godly conversation more often? I don't know if, you know, it's hard to start a conversation with individuals who aren't in your zoom members, family members, church members, whatever. But, uh, I think we, uh, we have to start there, you know, you have to know, um, you, that was the point I think of us, you don't have to know Christ, uh, you don't have to know all the answers or so whatever, you just have to be there and, and, and the uh, Holy Spirit will provide what you need, you just have to be sure of, uh, or trust God, I think we need to watch the video, but that was kind of the gist of it. <laughs> <laughs> Good laughing. Oh, so, sorry. Uh, but uh, yeah, we don't have to know everything, but we do have to trust God. That was the, I think, what the message was in one, one of the messages in that video. So, and the, I think so, I have yeah, a good we, example of that. Could, you, would you like me to share it? Yeah, absolutely. Yes, please. Okay. Well, um, my brother was uh, very, very angry with God, especially mm. um, after his wife passed away and left him with three young children. Well, they 12 and 13 and, and nine or something like that. And so anyway, he was very angry. And, uh, and so I, I too was a widow at that, or not at that time, but shortly thereafter, I was a widow also. And so, um, so we had that in common. And he was so mad. And I said, and he was telling me, he goes, you know, uh, God made a mistake. And I said, no, he did not. And he goes, well, he shouldn't have taken her because, you know, we have three little children. And I said, it was her time. God wanted her to come to his home, not, not stay in your home. And so he was very mad at me for a long time. Well, years went by and, and, uh, and he uh, uh, lived down in Owatonna and eventually moved up here about a half a mile from my house so that he could be close to me. And finally, one day he said to me, he goes, you know, you're so damn religious. And I went, oh, boy. <laughs> here, like, we go. here we go. And he goes, yeah. <laughs> and he says, you know, I'm dying. And I said, yeah, I know that. And he goes, well, I, I'm uh, Pastor Steve's going to do, do the service. And I'm going, Pastor Steve, my Pastor Steve. And he goes, <laughs> <laughs> and I go. At Eastern Heights Lutheran Church, you want to get buried out of Eastern Heights Lutheran Church? And he goes, yeah, yeah. Well, I thought you knew that. And I'm going, how would I know that? <laughs> you know, you've never brought it up in 20 years. You know, why, why, why would I know that? Well, yeah, yeah. And I just went, oh, my word. And so I think um, when it talks about, you know, living your, your faith at home, he says, well, I know you're religious, but you don't jam it down my throat was the gist of what he was trying to tell to me. And so he did get buried from our, our church. And I'm just kind of going, wow, how weird is that? You know, yeah. that, that he felt comfortable. And so finally I said to him, don't you think you should talk to Pastor Steve before you die? Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> he knows who you are, you know, yeah. other than my brother, you know? And he goes, oh yeah. I said, well, can I call him and tell him to, to come and talk to you? And he goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, but the gist of that was, was um, that I think just by me going to church and, and not, you know, jamming it down his throat, living the life that I thought I should live and showing him that that was the better way than what he was trying to do with the drinking and all that kind of stuff. So, um, so I think, um, you know, sometimes by example works really, really well. So that's my story. Yeah. Yeah, I, I feel the same way. I think that we are all disciples of Christ in the way we live our life, even though we may not say something, 
it's by our actions we can show that we're Christians and right. people know, you know, by your attitude and right. And I think we also we, that's very true. And we also need to um, look for opportunities to actually say something. Also, you know, because they could just totally be missed, and we we wouldn't want that to happen or whatever. And mm -hmm. that the difficult part to do and that was uh, some of those other chapters that we're going to read or whatever it's like you know just get out and say hello that's the first step in a lot of cases you know? day 34 we'll put that one in the books day 35 page 210 up at the top there, it says, I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. And that's um, on, on page 211 at the top, it says, I'm convinced the best way to grow the church and build God's kingdom is to continue meeting new people and getting involved in the community. And that's what we just talked about. Um, we just can't be our own little church group, our own little office group. Or you know, our own little friends and family, or whatever. We actually have to kind of reach out there and expand our possibilities of, of meeting people and and talking to others. I mean, we've got plenty here. Don't get me wrong. We got when we when we had to write that list of five people, or whatever. It was actually the same five people that we wrote the other Bible study. Do you remember that, Phyllis? We, um, five people we were going to pray for yeah five yeah. people we we're going to pray for and uh so you know it's it's the same five people and um so i think they're not going to come off our list unless we say something i guess <laughs> but um I, I i think when um you retire you know you lose that whole work family you know mm -hmm. i worked with hundreds of people yeah you know it was a huge building and you retire and you sit at home and it's like, oh, I got four walls and I have my son and I have Jim, but no. I'm not seeing the other thousand people that I saw all the time. So um, having a church home and family was extremely important, you know, exactly. not, not to um, uh, lose that <clears throat> part of my life, you know, and, um, and you know, the people at church might not know how important they are to me, but um, they're really important to me, you know, because I see a lot of people there and it gives me a comfort that uh, I'm with a lot of God's family, you know. Yeah. And I like it when the church does things outside the church and they yeah. actually start talking to people, you know, you have a booth somewhere or whatever, and you can, you can reach a lot of people. You don't have to like jam it down their throat, quote unquote, <laughs> you know, but you need maybe need to introduce it to them that you're willing to talk about it with them. You know, they can come to, you know, if you, if they, if they don't know that you want to talk about it, they probably won't ask you about it or whatever. So, uh, so what other ways can we uh, get out there and meet people? Um I liked his idea that he had about some of the organizations he served on or worked with. Yeah. Yeah, and absolutely. How does do HOA? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot of people are involved in these organizations. Let's say like um, Salvation Army, you know, there's people coming in there all the time needing service they need that service well yeah. that's the perfect opportunity you know to make to ask them if they um if they know about jesus christ you know um or like i said they just say hello hey you know would you like to have coffee someday or whatever and then you know just so that they know that you i think this is you know that that they know that you know that you want to talk to them about it you know, they'll, God will give you the opportunities. They'll, they'll bring them in. <laughs> I'll show you. Um, 
So one of the nicknames of the Holy Spirit is the Great Comforter. Uh, agree? Disagree? Do you feel that? I mean, well, like well, I, you said, yeah, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we got one. <laughs> it's been my, it's been my experience, especially in my, you know, my prayer and quiet times and times in the Word. I get a, I get a lot of comfort through that and i think that's the holy spirit yeah. do you agree or disagree? yeah that's exactly what i was thinking too it's i um i do take exception with the the line after that it says you don't need the holy spirit if you never leave the comfort zone and i don't really necessarily agree with that because i look at the holy spirit yeah being my comfort but also the one that communicates to god through jesus christ you know, from me to God, I, I need the Holy Spirit to communicate, even if I'm not praying. If I, I think I read that somewhere, and I feel that in my heart, that that's what the Holy Spirit does. Bless you. Thank you. So, uh, but aside from that, um, yeah, with the, the whole topic of this chapter, whatever, I think was about getting out of your comfort zone. And that's one thing with that, like the prayer we just did. It's like, I don't feel comfortable, but you do it. And then you, once you do it, you like, you feel, I don't know. I feel like oh, that wasn't so bad. It was just in my head that I was thinking it was a bad thing. And that, you know, because I think I'm going to mess up or whatever. But the, the great comforter is there. Common manner. Well, and my wife too. So she, she tells me it's all in my head. <laughs> Good job, Linda. <laughs> it's okay. Thank you. Well, I find it very comforting when someone passes that um, the comfort that I know is that my loved one is with God in heaven and in the holy place. And we will see them again. And um, it's helped through a lot of extreme tragedies, you know. I kissed my husband at 10 o'clock and at 12 o'clock he's dead. You know, it's like crazy. I saw my neighbor two weeks ago at, at two o'clock and four o'clock she's gone. You know, knowing that they were um, religious and, and knew God. And, and um, so that doesn't say I'm not sad. I'm very sad and I'm very upset and, and all of those things. And I cry all the time, but um, I'm still comforted knowing that they're with the lord mm -hmm. and you can't yeah. ask for anything better right you know, no. you know and and you also know that they're not suffering with all of these crummy little crappy issues that we have down here that are gigantic sometimes and overwhelming and um so there you go i'm done mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah yeah, you notice there's a lot, like um, a loss of a loved one. It's probably yeah. one of the hardest things. See, we've done it. We've gone through that. I'm sure many of you also have. And Phyllis, you've talked about that uh, about your husband. And uh, it's yeah, it's kind of nice to know that or have that feeling, that great comforting feeling, or whatever. That they're they're okay. They're actually better off than we are. They're not suffering. We are. Or whatever and that's that's the really hard thing about that but but it, it does make it a little easier and pay it in fact it makes to me it's like uh if there wasn't a heaven if there wasn't a situation where they're better off or whatever this this whole experiment on earth it doesn't make sense to me at all yes, what's the yes, point right? yeah. what's the point it, it yeah. doesn't it doesn't that's make right, sense mm -hmm. i can't <laughs> sure i suffered and i died that was it. Yeah, that's what you're for. <laughs> that's that's a stupid thing. <laughs> yeah. Really, spare me. <laughs> but now, if I died and went to heaven, and the suffering was uh, for a reason, you know, I get that. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> or that there is at least something to look forward to, despite the suffering. Right. 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 Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Other than yeah, getting put six feet under and that's it. That's sure. it. Yeah. Yeah. I always worry about people who are eager though. 
<laughs> to, but uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to this, to, you know, dying thing. This is going to be great, you know. <laughs> but I think you got a point, but I think you just have to be patient. <laughs> I do. I do feel like my mom was like that. She loved the Lord so much. She just wanted to go with them. She couldn't wait. She couldn't, couldn't wait. wait. <clears throat> wow. <laughs> Okay, so the challenge for that week 35 was uh, to say hello to some neighbor you haven't met yet. Did we do that? I did. Did I, you did? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I didn't do it that yeah. to take, hey, but I had a opportunity to do it with, because uh, I go get the mail and then there was a guy walking his dogs and I forgot his name, but the dog's name are Bruno and... <laughs> but you know i might see him again and uh you know we'll get i'll say hello again and we'll carry this conversation a little more i might get a name out of him so (laughs) there's a particular set of neighbors that i have in my apartment building and they well, I don't know. It's like three people and then this really little girl and she's absolutely adorable. Like, and the, there was one day uh, a couple weekends ago when I was um, running down, I was going downstairs. I was going to go outside and I was getting my mail and she was standing by her dad and I waved hello to her and she was waving hi back to me. And then she toddles over to me and she (laughs) gives me a hug on my leg. (laughs) <laughs> like, oh my gosh you're so precious <laughs> like, I, yeah I don't know her name and like I, I don't know their name so I, I'm right. thinking they're they're my people when I get a chance right. like, you see them yeah. in the building yeah yeah oh uh, that's awesome well see that's the beginning you know yeah. that's the start you gotta yeah you know. uh, yeah that's awesome I don't have any neighbors hugging my leg, but that is cute. Let me... <laughs> yeah. I know kids are so cute. They're so innocent and just so full of life. Yeah. You know, they're not inhibited by anything. They'll just do whatever. I don't know you, but I want to hug you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. I, I do that, I get in trouble. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah. So... Hi, Britta. Oh, he keeps coming up here. Cat's also very uninhibited. Yes, yes, she just goes wherever. So uh, let's see here, day thirty-six. So what did we said hello to our neighbors, and then uh, day thirty-six says you will be my witness. Um. The so that those were the last words of. Jesus before he ascended into heaven and uh, the author is saying um, that we are all witnesses to Jesus and every anything that he's done for us whatever we can tell that story and that would be our testimony and I've heard a lot of testimonies over my so many years I won't say many years um a lot of them are, you know, very emotional, like because they're like guest speakers of a church or something like that, and they're very strong emotional testimonies. Um, and I, I love those, and, but uh, you know, there there's also the testimony of your everyday life, every you know the simple things that he does for you in life, and um, each of us has a story to tell. And the author wants to know what has God done for you, and I don't know if you had an opportunity. I think that was uh, to write down your testimony. If you have a testimony, it's close. It's close. Oh. I, I should probably take you. So, does anybody have? Ha, has anybody done that? Did they write that down? Did you? Would you be willing to share that with you, us? I. <laughs> I'll jump in. I, I started, um, and I, as I thought about this, I'd really like to do, uh, I'd like to come up with a, 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 a good version. I'd like to make a really condensed, uh, elevator version 
Sure. You know, I'd, I'd like to do it a whole bunch of ways. But I, I started and I got kind of an outline down. And okay. um, I could I could share that if you want to. I, I could be extemporaneous enough. Plus, I think this is the this is the way if I were to I, I don't I don't record myself on Facebook. I don't take selfies. I don't do any of that. So this might be the best venue for me to get this out into a recording. So I'm I'm good with doing yep. that. Um, I'll, yeah, I, I kind of a five point thing and I'll try to keep this quick and not ramble on. Um, I had a church upbringing very early on. Um, it, most of it was at Eastern Heights. So yeah. that's a, that's a good thing. A lot of my formative growing up years were at Eastern Heights and I, um, and as you know, their emphasis on the word has always impressed me a lot. And, um, and, you know, I started going to Bible studies early on and throughout my teenage years and was very involved. And then I had a friend, a friend of mine, a good friend of mine from high school invite me, said, hey, I, I know you're a, a Bible, you know, you like Bible studies. And I got invited to this Bible study at somebody's house. And I, he didn't know them before they invited him, but he invited me to go along and the two of us went and it turned into this two hour long berating lecture by the leader of um how all the other churches are terrible and they're all going to hell we're the only church that's got it right we're the only church that's really uh following the bible and you guys need to get baptized into our church right now um you know or you're lost that, that was it and it was uh uh it was very troublesome it was very uh, upsetting it was very probably could argue abusive um what i remember going away from that was um what i remember going away from that was um i have one church quoting the bible and using the bible to tell me how it is i'm saved and i have another church using the bible and quoting the bible to tell me that i'm damned and um and i i, I didn't know what to do with that i struggled with that you know does the bible just just what you want to make it to be or you know to to pursue and pursue your own agenda and um so I, I was really troubled with that for a long time and had this internal conflict going on um when i got to college i got involved with a pretty healthy fellowship and they were again they were really big on the word and and had the discipline of like scripture memory and um very, very em emphasis on, on learning from the Bible and studying the Bible and applying it, applying it well. Um, so that was, a, that was a huge benefit to me. Um, but it was also time during those college years, um, I, had to, I had to decide, and I know Lutherans don't always like the word decision or whatever, but um, <laughs> for, me, for me, I knew I had to be intentional about what it is to follow Jesus and what it is to have faith. I can't do this on default. I can't do this on autopilot. Um, I need to be serious. And, um, you know, Jesus, Jesus died and saved you and he loves you where you're at. We all know verses about that, but there's also a Lord, you know, a, a Lordship, a discipleship, even in this, even in this challenge, we're talking about being a follower of Jesus and doing things that, Jesus followers do so there's this there's this element of obedience and um it, it doesn't happen you know that there there's some you have to walk in that way um and that really got impressed on me in my college years and uh with the help of God and through his word um I got to the place where I could make a, re a, a, a come to that resolution where I do have faith, I do belong to him. Um, I know where I'm headed. I know where I'm going. And um, I would say in my life, the, the Bible, the scripture, which I, I feed myself on daily, um, is now a great source of comfort to me, a great source of inspiration, uh, a great source of peace. And uh, whether things are going well or things are not going so well. So, uh, it's been a good thing. God's been good to me. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. That's, thanks for sharing that too. That's awesome. 
So and now I can check this off my list. Yeah. Check it out. <laughs> but, but more importantly, I see that you have direction. You know, you know where to go to get you know your peace and comfort and all that. That's that's what we need to do. We need to find the answers. And uh, it looks like you're you're doing really really good with that. That's awesome. Oh, it's more God than me, but <laughs> I'm, oh, very, I'm very I'm very grateful for the for the walk and the journey that I've been on. It's yeah. a good thing. Okay, and any others uh, want to share? Uh, Phyllis, I know you shared your testimony about your husband and the communion and all that. And that was, <laughs> I like that one too. That was pretty powerful. So. Um, I can all, I could tell you um, the first time that I noticed God was really in my life is when um, I was dating my husband and he took me to, um, does anybody remember the Jesus people church? Oh yeah. I yeah. Do. And um, <laughs> yeah, they had great music. It, it was a little disturbing to me at the beginning when I saw them physically remove people from the congregation for shouting out things they weren't supposed to. <laughs> so anyway, they, they just felt that they were had the devil in them at that point, but they were very any, any interesting group. <laughs> and so anyway, they had a concert um, um, at, at downtown Minneapolis that we went to and we were in orchestra hall and orchestra hall I think I'm at the right place I think that's where I was anyway um they have it's very acoustical uh ceiling in there and so it's like little boxes all over so that you can see that and I and I was sitting there and um, I didn't know if I was a Christian or not at that time. You know, I was like, well, I guess I know who Jesus is, but I don't know if I'm following him or anything. And, um, and so we're at this concert and, and I kept on smacking Jeff and going, do you see him? Do you see him? <laughs> and you don't have to physically show that. Yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> Better story. Better story. Well, I got my knee now. Now my arm is not got away. Oh, gosh. Thank you very much. So, so anyway, I was sitting there and I'm going, right over there. Right over there. Don't you see it? And he goes, what are you looking at? And I said, third box from the right over on the left hand side. Don't you see that? Right there. That guy. And he goes, what guy are you seeing? And, I, and I'm going, and I had goosebumps and the hair on my arms was standing up. And I'm going, right there, he's looking at me. Wow. And, and Jeff goes, okay, you know, <laughs> and, and that was that. So that was the first time um, that I actually knew that God was with me and that I actually, I don't think I really actually saw him, but I saw a figure of some sort during this music that was being played and and I had the feeling that he was coming into my life at that point and and that uh, making me aware that he was really there and and I went whoa that's why you have to have faith to believe that that was him yeah and, and so that was that was the beginning of my journey and then um my husband always told me, he says, well, I was always a strong Christian all this time. And he said, I knew God would send me something, somebody, and, mm -hmm. and you had to find him too. Um, and that's so really that's, there after we were married. Yeah. Wow. That's, that's like your other testimony where you have that gift of perception, that, that feeling. Yeah. 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 It's pretty it's cool. Huh. People think I'm crazy. <laughs> Amen to that. <laughs> Yes, she is. I can yeah, vouch for that. So that that I call that the beginning of my spiritual life, you know, was that concert and, and me feeling, you know, <clears throat> I have this very physical um, thing when I feel that Jesus is really close to me and showing me the way. So cool. it doesn't happen often, but it's cool. always. And so, you know, it's not always, um, you know, a, a big situation like that, that you can share with others. Um, because I have, I have a story. Well, you heard, you 
for those who have been in this group for a while or whatever we had i had my uh martin luther story about my previous marriage and all that yeah i don't know if you remember that but that's kind of one of the stories i can tell but i have another one that uh it's kind of more recent um so at work i uh i have a job that i do that i found is kind of uh stressing and the the job was to uh to balance the accounts out each day and make sure that there's enough funds in there so they're not so you don't overdraft the account well so, uh, that works most of the time uh, but sometimes you do overdraft the account and when you do it's 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 painful because you know management's got to know you got to explain to them what happened you got to write up reports and sure enough there's going to be policy changes coming out and it's it's just very very stressful and I didn't really like that and I, I I almost wanted to quit just because of that particular job. Um, but one day, um, it was almost like God said, read this Bible. And then uh, I picked it up and I read Proverbs uh, 16.3, which said, commit your work to the Lord and your plans will be established. I had no idea what that meant, but it had work in there and I was feeling stressed about work so I'm like this this means something to me I don't know what it means uh so the next day I wrote that on a piece of paper at my desk I wrote commit your work to the Lord and I, I still don't know what that means but I'm guessing maybe if I did the best job I could and then hand it off to God you know put it in God's hands like they say um that maybe maybe that's what I'm supposed to do uh, so I did that and, um, I did the best I could. And then I just said, Jesus, this isn't, this is for, it's yours. It's, I don't know what you're going to do with it. I don't even understand this, but, um, of course I didn't overdraft the account that day, but, uh, the next day I did the same thing. I wrote, commit your work to the Lord on a piece of paper. And I didn't overdraft the account that day either. And this went on for a while i stopped writing on a piece of paper commit your work to the lord that's that got kind of old but um i kept doing that i kept committing my work to the lord and uh three <laughs> months later over three months later i get an email from my bosses it was a congratulatory email that said basically we had no overdrafts for a whole quarter that has never happened before in the in recent history basically so that is one way god provided for me he gave me the answer it was right there in in the book and i just had to figure it out so it's not a big deal it's not you know but to me it was you know so that's my story and I'm i guess i have i guess i have one that i that i have to share many years sure. ago um, I was watching TV and I happened to see the Shriners hospital commercial and, you know, how much good that they were doing for children. So, you know, I started donating to that. And my, uh, at that time, my uh, brother-in-law was a Mason. So I had told him about, uh, about, you know, how wonderful that the Shriners were to have this hospital where they did this at no charge to the families. <clears throat> so um, he said, um, well, are you interested in becoming a Mason? So um, make a long story, story short. Yeah, I did join the Masons and I um, had some good fellowship there. Uh, there was one thing that did bother me though. Uh, the uh, master of the lodge, uh, you know, you stood up and you had to say, uh, worshipful master. And then you would, you know, he would say, go ahead and talk or whatever. Well, that, that really started bothering me the more I thought about it. Because, uh, you know, worshipful master, well, that was, uh, that was really hard for me to deal with. And, um, of course, you know, what, 2,000 years ago when you were a Mason, well, the Master Mason 
is the one that taught you how to how to lay your bricks and the foundation and everything. And he was addressed as, uh, you know, worshipful master. Well, I didn't, I couldn't do that anymore. So I went and talked to Andy and he was a secretary at the, at the, at the lodge. And I said, you know, and I told him what had happened. And I said, I just, I just don't feel right with that. And I said, can you take my name off the books? Well, you never get off the books. <laughs> because, you, you know, and, and I said, I just can't, I can't go anymore. You know, I can't do it anymore. I just can't address him, a mortal man, as worshipful master. You know, even though that, you know, I wish I could explain. Anyway, uh, so from that point on, I never went back to Lodge. And I had told my wife at that time, I said, I'm, what had happened? And I just can't, I just can't call him worshipful master. I just can't do it. If it wasn't for that, I probably still would be a Mason. But um, uh, I guess that's my story. You know, I just, to me, God is the worshipful master. Jesus is the worshipful master, the Holy Spirit. And there and, ain't no other God before you. Yeah, yeah and uh, whew, we're gone. We're gone. Can you see us? Yeah, yes, we I see you. Oh, we lost yeah, we, you. Oh. Yes, something oh. happened. The screen's oh. black. Oh, we can still hear you. We oh. see you. We see you. We see you. There you go. We see yeah. you. We hear you. We love you. <laughs> Come Thank back, you. come back to the light. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'd like to. <laughs> anyway, that's a story. I don't think yeah. I really Hey, you know what? Um, oh, there you are. Oh, you're back. Yeah, now you're back. Um, I, had a, I had a friend who was a Mason and he also invited me, but I didn't know if I could be one because uh, I thought I heard that in the Lutheran church that you that you shouldn't be. And wow. so I called up the pastor or called up Pastor Benson and asked him, you know, hey, I got this opportunity to do this. Can I do this? I don't know if you can, if the rules have changed or whatever, since the last I heard that 40 years ago, whatever. He said, you don't want to do that. Uh, uh, <laughs> I did, I did later uh, really think about it. And uh, Jesus Christ's name was never brought up mm. at, in, in the Masonry Bible. And I, Bible? and I didn't know that at the time, but then I got to thinking about it. Yeah, you know, I had a beautiful Masonic Bible that was given to me. And uh, nowhere in there did it mention Jesus' name. And so now when I keep thinking about that and I think about, well, you know, why I, why I stopped going, the worshipful master, I'm... Thank you, Jesus, that I did. Yeah. 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 Your master told you to stop. Yeah. <laughs> Real one. No, well, that's awesome. Great story, Jim. Thank I you. guess I could share, well, or like an extemporaneous thing since we all are. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I'd say I was definitely raised as a Christian in a Christian home. And um, I'd say when I was a little girl, I was probably a lot more in tune personally with Jesus, maybe on an emotional level. Like I know, I remember like when I was, I was three had to have been um, like, I, I had a dream and I don't think it was a dream. I think it really happened like I was staying overnight with my grandmother of uh, my grandparents both my parents weren't there so they were taking care of me and I was in the bed with my grandmother in the living room with the pull-out sofa and I have a clear distinct memory of looking at myself as I'm laying down and then there's my grandmother and then it's like I was with something like an angel or whatever and the next thing I saw was me in my crib but in the condo that we moved in in Fargo, like before this had happened, like I was 
maybe being shown, oh, hey, Elsa, you're going to be moving to a different town. It's going to be okay. And, and kind of being prepared for that. Um, but I would say, you know, like at the point that my parents got divorced uh, and watching how my dad treated my mom and especially how my dad treated me um, and walking out on our family, that really affected my relationship with the Lord. And it, it has been all the way into adulthood. I wasn't until I was in my 20s in counseling that it finally, or that my therapist had finally said, well, you know, Elsa, a lot of the way that you view the Lord right now and your issues with that is because of your dad. And like, I think it's been ever since then, I've still, I've still been trying to work through that. And, you know, this 40 day challenge has brought to light that like, I do need to work on forgiving him. Um, cause I know I haven't. And, and I, and because of that, I don't like whatever was going on with me as a little girl and stuff that my mom would tell me about me as a little girl with my relationship with Jesus was a lot more emotionally connected than it is now. I don't have that with the Lord. Um, there are good things that he will do in my life that I can say intellectually, I realize the Lord was providing for me, but it's like my heart's closed off. I don't feel it. Yeah. So it's still a work in progress. It's it is. I can say that I've come up through the other side on that. Well, you're not done yet. No. The story's not done. Yeah. No. It, it's just <laughs> it's just a new chapter. And and I think we all had these challenges in our lives. And we find a way through them. You know, we talked about the deaths, how how but it's you don't think you're going to get through them, but you do. And you're not alone. You're not alone. We all have experienced similar situations. I mean, everybody, every story is different, yeah. but we all struggle. I mean, I do think to myself realistically with that and combined with like, you know, the challenges of growing up as a teenager, not having a really great youth group, getting very much into theater and acting and finding solace there. I think in any average situation, like I would have easily just walked away from the church. So I do feel like in that sense, like I know that the Lord's still been tugging on me, even if like there's that disconnect there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you're here. You didn't walk away. You didn't close the book. No. That's awesome. We're, and we're here for you, man. <laughs> Thank you. And if you ever want to talk about theater, Dale's the guy. That talk about. <laughs> it's been a long time. Is it? Yeah. I thought you went back into that. Like, uh, did you go into that? For I started. I started out college as a theater major, but changed changed majors. Yeah, and that's what I got my first degree in. So I did that for a bit of time. Sure. I think since then, the only thing I've, since college, the only thing I've done is for, for a ministry, they needed some help with uh, some acting and some, some sketches they were doing and they, and I was helping out with the ministry. So I said, oh, why not? And, you know, I, I had the experience. So it was, it was a good thing, but mm -hmm. the, the, the director was like, oh, now that you're doing this, now that the theater bug is bit you, you know, don't you want to just keep doing it? And I said, no, I could take it or leave it. <laughs> I, when I do it, I love it. I put in my 110%, but if God, like, like anything, um, that is, but if God's calling me to do something else, then I'll do that too. I'm happy to serve him in any capacity. Yeah. And I'm, I mean, I won't touch it right now. I won't touch it unless if I'm treated as a professional and I get paid for it. That's what I want. <laughs> I have my four years of training for in my degree. I don't want to be treated as like, oh, you can go to community theater and you don't need to get paid for it. Yeah. So I don't have to do it right now at this point. Right. <laughs> and it's not like I'm going to get any jobs. I'm a white girl. They don't want me. <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> so yeah i can i can rant off on my yeah very well, it, it was frustrations fun. with hollywood and the theatrical scene right now oh yeah oh, yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> we won't go there <laughs> i had this conversation just a couple weeks ago with my brother-in-law 
feels the same. It's kind of, it's, it's a new world. Yeah. It's a new world. Get used to it. <laughs> um, okay, so it's eight o'clock. I have to figure out how to shut this recording off.